so far we discussed two things one was the band pass filter and the second is band stop filter uh, let me remind you again last week we were discussing the methodology of how to transform an analog filter into digital filter we today we are discussing how to design uh, digital filter directly using pole zero methods right so in this example, we, we, we took these parameter value, we substitute them into the formulas and after calculations, we end up with this expression of this thing. Just to remind you again, these formulas are going to be available to you guys uh, during the exam. Okay, now let's uh, move on with uh, the another case where we have to design the first order low pass filter. So, uh, so far we discussed the band pass filter, we discussed the band stop filter, and now we are discussing the low pass filter how to design a first order low pass filter using pole zero method again uh you, you your cutoff frequency has to be specified and it has to be usually in the range of fs by four it should be less than that right so uh where the pole should be that is determined by the value of alpha which is given by this formula right so after substituting the values, and it, the, the value of R should be usually always between 0.9 and 1. That is usually a good practice. It's based on the uh, different experimentation. See, the zero in this case is placed at a far end at a high frequency. What is the reason behind this? You know, you, you are designing a low pass filter. So naturally, you want to zero the higher frequency. And higher frequency are usually at these points. This is another case when you go for a uh, pole place it on the real axis. It is uh, towards the high frequency range. So these are different methodologies that are being used. It is explicitly specified when to use them. The transfer function, the generalized format for the transfer function for the first order low pass filter is K into Z plus one divided by Z minus alpha. C zero is always placed at the far end at a high frequency at Z equal to minus one. How to get the value of K? This is the formula. Now, these formulas are already be, been proved. You don't have to worry about it. It's been experimented before. So you just have to utilize them. Now, the, here is an example. Transfer function of the first order low pass filter is required to satisfy. This is the first condition. Sampling rate is provided. 3 dB cutoff frequency is provided, which is 100 hertz. Zero gain at 4,000 hertz. So that means this is your ultimate cutoff, which is somewhere here. That means there is no gain anymore. Now, what we are going to do is since the cutoff frequency is 100 hertz, right? So uh, from this uh, the, from this setup, the, 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 the formula is in here. We substitute the values. And after rearranging, we get the value of alpha, right? Similarly, in order to calculate the value of K, we have the formula for K, which is here. So you substitute the value of alpha here, you get the value of K, which comes out to be here. So your final transfer function, you substitute the value of K and alpha, and you get a response of first order low pass filter. Once you have this expansion, you can rearrange it. You can get the value of H of N, which I'm sure you guys can do. Uh, and then you can plot it to see if you are getting the desired response. So this is how we designed uh, a low pass filter. See, there are two parameters you have to find out using the formula. One is alpha and one is k. The alpha formula is here, right? And the k formula is here. And after substituting these values, you end up with an expression like this. Okay, similarly, if you have to design the first order high pass filter using pole zero method, how are you gonna do that? Again, if your cutoff frequency is less than fs by four, you have to use this formula. When your cutoff frequency is greater than fs by four, then you have to use this formula. Same was the case in here. When your cutoff frequency is less than fs by four, you do fs. Fs is the sampling frequency. Then you use these formulas. When the cutoff frequency is greater than fs by four, then you use this formula. Don't forget this. This is a, the, the, the important step. You, you guys know what is cutoff frequency. You guys know what is sampling frequency. Now, regarding the high pass filter, your cutoff frequency will be provided to you. So again, you have a generalized expression H of Z K into Z minus one divided by Z minus alpha. Now see, in this case, your zero is always placed at uh, theta is equal to zero. That means here at Z equal to one, right? That means it, it zeroed 
uh, out the, the the zero frequency. So th this this is your point where you have to place the zero. So this is why is z minus one. Here it was z plus one. So in this case, your zero was uh, actually placed at the far end. In this case, your zero is placed at the uh, closer end, right? Now, uh, the rest of the formula is almost the same. See, z minus alpha. The only difference is for z plus one and this is z minus one for high pass filter. The formula for k is almost similar. So you have to find out the value of alpha and you have to find out the value of k. You will get the h of z expression. Now, let's say, uh, here's an example. Transfer function of the first order high pass filter is required to satisfy the following condition. Sampling rate is 8000 hertz. 3 dB cutoff frequency is 3800 hertz. And zero gain at zero hertz, right? That means the zero point is in here. Since the cutoff frequency is this much, which is greater than Fs by four, this is something you have to remember. So we, we are no longer going to be using this formula for alpha, we are going to be using this formula. So in this formula, we substitute the value of cutoff frequency in Fs, and after rearranging, we, we get the value this. Similarly, we substitute the value of alpha into the K formula and we end up with the, with the final values like this. Okay, uh, there is a slight mistake. It says one minus alpha. If you see, it's one plus. But if ultimately when the value is substituted, it was negative. So that means this was actually plus. Uh, this is a slight mistake. Make sure you, you do the correction in uh, your documents. And the transfer function in here, h of z equal to kz minus one, which is here, z minus alpha, you substitute the value, you end up with the transfer function. And you guys can then rearrange, take the inverse z transform of this to get the value of h of n, plot it, and you can see the ultimate response. So uh, this was the discussion regarding how to design the first order low pass filter, how to design the first order high pass filter, how to design the uh, band pass filter, how to design the uh, band stop filter, right? So these are uh, a few examples. Now let's move further. Uh, let's say how, how to realize this filter, how to design it in Simulink and other uh, DSP environment. You guys have done the uh, direct form one and direct form two structure. So I, I, I'm, I'm uh, skipping this particular uh, step where you can transform this expression into ultimately different equation and then you can plot these things. You guys have, have done these uh, direct form one and direct form two structures, right? In signal and system course. Yes. Hello? Okay. So I'm just going to skip this one. Uh, this was your uh, uh, course part back uh, in signal and system. So I'm not going to be discussing this. Okay, now let's go for uh, a real time uh, imp implementation of these filters and what can be their possible use. Let's say uh, it, it says 60 hertz hum eliminator. Uh, you know, uh, the in in US and some other countries, they use 110 volt and 60 hertz. Um, in Pakistan, uh, mostly and in Asian countries, we use 50 hertz and 220 volt. So the humming sound that we're going to be receiving in this country is going to be 50 hertz, not 60 hertz. And what is the hum sound? Normally, when you have any digital signal generator or any uh, sensor device, it is pretty common to receive uh, noise from the power supply all the time. Now, how to remove that? you have to design notch filter. Now, interestingly, the waveform that we receive for the uh, supply voltages, it's not always pair sinusoidal. So that means it has harmonics, which means you won't have just the first 50 hertz, you will have 100 hertz, you will have 150 hertz and so on. The first two, three harmonics are pretty, uh, pretty much contributing. Uh, this is why. Uh, when you are designing the filter, you're not going to be designing single filter for like 60 hertz. You can design multiple filters, one for 60 hertz, one for 120, one for 180, and you can cascade them. So they will ultimately remove those particular frequency. This is a methodology where you have to remove more than one frequency. Is that loud and clear to you guys? 
Hello? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. See, uh, earlier we discussed a notch filter. Notch filter is supposed to remove specific frequency, one frequency, the, the, the filter that we discuss in here, this one, notch filter. It was going to remove one frequency, right? So if you have to remove multiple frequencies, so then you need to have multiple notch filters like uh, in this case, and they have to be cascaded one connected to the next one to the next one so when you pass the signal through it it the first one will remove the 60 hertz the second one will remove 120 hertz and the third one is going to remove 180 hertz you know uh you guys also know that when you connect these uh, systems in case kit they are actually convolved with each other in time domain and in frequency domain their transfer functions can be multiplied with each other to get the final response so it's totally up to you if you want to design them as a single unit or you want to design them as individually is that clear hello yes sir okay so let's say uh, we have an input signal which is corrupted by 60 hertz frequency which is corrupted by 120 and 180 and these are the three which produce the humming sound, right? Now, how to remove these? So let's go for uh, an example of, let's say, ECG pulse. You know, electrocardiograph to check your heart rate and you, you to check if, in case there is any cardiac disease that you are having. So it usually have uh, five different peaks, P, Q, R, S, and T. This is P peak, this is Q peak, this is R peak, this is S peak, and this is T. Now, these different peaks actually determine whether you are going to have any particular disease. But what if you have ECG signal and it is uh, the, the humming, which is 60 hertz and uh, 120 hertz and 180, they are added onto it. So it changes the shape of your ECG waveform. Now, how would you ensure to remove this humming sound uh, from the supply to get the actual electrocardiograph that can be used to determine whether you are going to have any particular class of arrhythmia or heart disease? There are more than 16 classes of heart disease, actually. So, and each one of them is having a different response. So, this P, Q, R, S, T, this, these, the combination of these, they, they actually tell the particular doctor whether you are going to have a particular disease or not. Do you guys completely understood the problem, right? Yes, 